Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, and today we're talking about setting up a multiple out MIDI drum kit. So there's a slow way to do this, which you've probably been doing so far, and there's a quicker way. And once we see that quicker solution, I'm going to show you the real pimp way of doing it as well. So the quick way to do it is to right click on this empty track control panel area and go insert virtual instrument on new track. And once I do that, my effects browser pops up and it's already on the instruments tab. So if I just double click on this play, you will see this notice, build routing confirmation. Do you want to add the following tracks to this effect? Basically you just say yes. And it just creates all those tracks for you. So as we can see from this first track, which is called play, we already have all these sends and the MIDI is set to none. And the audio is the first one is going to one and two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18. And we're off to the races. And then I just come here to the mixer and here I can set my outputs. So I can set my kicks to maybe one and two. I can set my snares to three and four. Uh, let's send my hi-hat to five and six. And if you're using, you know, Superior Drummer or GGD or whatever, there's always a mixer section. And in the mixer section, you can set these virtual outputs. So once I do that, I'll just go through and assign the rest of the outputs. And then all my separate drum compartments are going to come out of these tracks. One mistake that some people make is that then they take these tracks and they make them the children of this first track. Now, this is not correct routing because when a track is the child of another track, that means that audio and MIDI from this track will flow through their parent. So what's happening is that we're sending audio out from this play to these tracks, and then audio from these tracks is coming back to this track. But on this track, as its first plugin, we have a VSTI instrument. And as you can see, the VSTI instrument has 18 outs. It has no ins. It doesn't take in audio. What you need to do is first select all these tracks and then make a parent track for all of those. I have a custom script for me to do this and I'll call this drums. And now it looks like this. It's already auto colored. And the action I was using is Locasana create folder to contain selected tracks. And I have command shift and D assigned to that just like Logic Pro. Here's another bonus tip. If you want to color these, one thing you can do is use this script that makes them gradients of each other. So that's pretty cool. And that one is I see you set color gradient to children tracks starting from parent color. Pretty useful action. So this is kind of the basic and quick setup. But of course, to me, this is still not fully prepared. Sure, I can create a clip here. If I start writing on it, we can see that everything is coming out of the right outputs. So my kick is coming out of one and two. My snare is coming out of three and four, as well as these are rooms and overheads and all that. My hi-hat is there. My toms are there. So everything is there. Everything, all the sounds are coming out. If we look at my mixer here, we can see that in East West, at least you can't choose mono tracks, but you can choose stereo pairs. Something I can do, for example, now my kick in and kick out are going to output one and two. And I'm going to do something that may look weird, but I'm going to take my kick in and pan it all the way left. I'm going to take my kick out and pan it all the way right. And I'm going to do the same thing to my snare top and snare bottom. And you may be saying, well, that's weird, but let me show you why I did that. I can duplicate this track and I can duplicate this track. And I'm going to call this kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom. Open the routing here. And when it comes to kick in, I'm just going to send track one there. When it comes to kick out, I'm just going to send track two there. And the same thing for my snare, just three, just four. So from here, when we pan stuff, well, if I pan something all the way left, it's going to just come out of output one. And when I pan this all the way right, it's going to just come out of output two. And the same thing for my snare top and snare bottom. So that way I actually get like a mono track that is just my kick in, just my kick out. And that way I get more control over it. Similarly, I'm going to take my hi-hat track and pan it all the way left. And then I'm going to take my floor tom track and pan it all the way right. And let's do the same thing with our rack toms. And we are ruining the panning on these, but I'll show you why I do that in a second. So one more time, make a copy of this, make a copy of that. I'm going to go hi-hat and I'm going to call this floor. Tom one, 
Tom 2. And again, the same deal here. So hi-hat is only coming out of track five. So let's do that. Floor is only coming out of track six. So let's do that. Tom one will be seven. Tom two will be eight. And now here again, I can pan these the way they were panned over there, just on this side. So I'm gonna take my hi-hat, put it 50% left. I'm gonna take my floor tom and make that maybe 90% right. I'm gonna take my tom one and make that 20% left. And let's take my tom two and make that 30% right. We can always dial these in. And the rest are overheads, they're stereo anyway, so I'm just gonna name the rest of the tracks and that's it. And now just to show you, if I solo my kick in, that's just a kick in. If I solo the kick out, that's just a kick out. That snare top, that snare bottom. And again, pay attention to the fact that the hi-hat is panned all the way left. But when it comes in here, it's not panned all the way left. It's just panned 50% left. So here, since we're just hard panning stuff, that just means that they will go fully to one of the two channels. That way I can get them here separate. All of these are mono now, and these four are stereo. And again, we can stop right here, but we can also maybe add some plugins. I know I'm gonna be EQing this stuff, so I'm gonna find re-EQ, just cause this is a <laughs> Reaper channel. With all these tracks selected, I'll go add to select the tracks. Let's add Rio comp to this. And again, maybe even on the master drum track, I can put an EQ. Maybe I can put Rio X comp on there. And we're still not done. I can maybe get these tracks and add a reverb to them. For that, I have a custom script that I use right here. It's called MPL add receive track from selected tracks. So I hit it. Let's give it a name. Let's call it drum verb. There's our drum reverb. And again, maybe let's grab all of this stuff. And one more time, let's add a drum crush to the party. So maybe I'll add a little bit of the old SSL comp to this. Maybe I want a special snare reverb like a plate reverb or something. And now that we did all of that, I can again maybe make these kind of nice and gradient like this. And we're finally ready to save them as a track template. So right click, save tracks as track template. And this time I can maybe also include track items because those track items are this empty 16 bar long MIDI item. So we're just that much closer to beginning to write when we load this up. I save this. And this is our awesome multi-out drum instrument, which, you know, again, it's pretty quick to just come from here, insert virtual instrument on track, and it will already create those tracks. Then you got to name all of those tracks. You got to come here and do all this routing on whatever software you use for your MIDI drums. And even then you don't have as much control as when you spend a little bit of time doing all of this. And now that I've done this, I never need to do it again. Well, I did this a long time ago. I had to do it again for a tutorial but I never have to do this again. I can just delete this stuff, goodbye. I don't even care, I'm not even saving my project. And I can just go insert track from template, drum setup, and Bob's your uncle. Everything's there, and that's the story of that. That's it for today, thanks for watching. If you like the work I do, you can support the channel by becoming a member here on YouTube, or you can make one-time donations through buymeacoffee.com. All the links will be in the description and up there and all over the place. A huge thanks to Slimpy Man, Fuzzy Elephant, and Diogo Russo for supporting the channel. Thanks to all our members, and I'll see you next Friday with a members-only video. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you very soon. Bye!